across our nation, schools celebrate Read Across America with guest speakers and fun activities. At Chesapeake High School in Pasadena, Maryland, we celebrated our 11th annual Day of Reading with authors, artists, astrophysicists, and even a former NFL football player. Sit back, relax, and enjoy our 2018 Read Across America event. I'm introducing Lisa Banks. Uh, she has a doctorate of education. She has written two books, C3, Creating Career Connections, and All Connections Matter. I've personally read these two books, and they've helped me a lot knowing about jobs and how to get them. Thank you. All Connections Matter. Change Your Circumstances by Changing Your Connections is a book that hones in on the connections that can strengthen or bind an individual. It provides agency to people who use the book to empower their lives by using the exercises and resources to make personal changes. The readers walk through a process of examining connections for their relevance and importance. This book also notes not to fear disconnecting from those who are not in support of your success and well-being. And the book affords you an opportunity to not only hold the mirror up, but tilt it 360 degrees around your life for a full view of your connections. All Connections Matter is an A to Z guide to checking your connections. Are they stretching your vision or choking your dream? Do you need to disconnect? Don't apologize. Sometimes it may be necessary. At other times, it's absolutely imperative that you disconnect. Don't procrastinate. If you need to disconnect with certain people, do it now, not later. Why? The company you keep determines who you are. Available at Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, all major online booksellers, and www.drlisabanks.org. I'm going to try to feel my way through this presentation. I kind of like to move around, but I might sit down a little. Um, I want this to be an interactive discussion. I just don't want to stand up here and talk. I want you all to ask me every question possible because I think people benefit more if questions are asked. Um, and we have a dialogue. But I want to start off at least telling you a little bit about why I wrote the book. Um, I shared with the group er from earlier this morning, and I know that some of you are still here now, that I work for the federal government. I work for the Department of Homeland Security. And I've worked in the government for years. I started when I was really young, not to say that I'm not really young now. And I hope you all will catch my jokes as I say them. I see a smile right here. But, um, <laughs> uh, that was a good joke, young man. <laughs> Um, I started when I was really young in the federal government, and I started as a secretary, and I didn't want to be a secretary. One, I already had a college degree, and not to say just because I had a college degree I shouldn't be a secretary, but I studied and went to school. I had plans, um, but sometimes the plans don't work out the way you want them to work out. But long story short, I matriculated through the federal government. I started, the grades go from one to a 15. I started as GS4, which is nearly at the very bottom. For more than 10 years now, I've been beyond the top at a GS15. And I've learned that it doesn't just take a technical skill set to get where you want to go in the government or any other job, but rather you need to have good interpersonal skills, which we talked about this morning, which is good communication, communication skills how to work with people effectively. But I think I found, I know I found in my career, the most important thing has been the connections that I've made. Um, and I would challenge each of you to take advantage of the connections that you have and communicate with people because, believe it or not, you're not going to get anywhere by yourself. No man is an island. You need other people. You need people in your life that's going to help you grow, people that will tell you the truth, tell you when you're doing something good, and tell you when you're not. And if you only have people in your group that are telling you you're good and you're fabulous and you're grand, Trust me, those people don't have your, thank you, don't have your good, you know, in front of them because no one's perfect, nobody's that good and no one's that grand. Trust me, we all have things about us that we need to correct and work on. So how many of you know what a circle of influence is? Can you, you want to share? Okay, she said, what is around you that impacts you? Anyone else? 
I think I saw another hand somewhere right here. Yes, sir. Mutually supporting. Mutually supporting. Anything else? Okay. Well, there's a person in leadership theory t um, called, his name is Stephen Covey, and he talks about the circle of influence as the circle of people that you impact. I look at the circle of influence as those people that are around me, that are around you, that have an impact and influence on me. So the title of this book is All Connections Matter, Change Your Circumstance by Changing Your Connections. And it's an A to Z guide to checking your connections. When you ask yourself the question, are they stretching your vision or are they choking your dream? You want to make certain that the people in your circle are stretching your vision and not choking your dream. So I'm going to read a few quotes. Um, and again, I see a lot of talking going on. So if I'm boring, you let me know. But I do need you to understand this is very important. Um, when I look back over my life when I was in high school, I wish I would have known some of the things that I know today, but no one told me. So now that you have someone to tell you, I'm not saying that you need to listen to every word I say and grab it and take a hole and run with it, but what I am saying it is that sometimes we need to realize that some things are for our good when we don't even think they are. And you never know what tidbit of information you can get today that will help you in the long run and that will impact your career in a very positive way, okay? So I'm gonna start off with a few quotes. One of the first quotes is, the less you associate with some people, the more your life will improve. Anytime you tolerate mediocrity in others, it increases your mediocrity. An important attribute in successful people is their impatience with negative thinking and negative acting people. As you grow, your associates will change. Some of your friends will not want to, you to go on. They will want you to stay where they are. Friends that don't help you climb will want you to crawl. Your friends will stretch your vision or choke your dream. Those that don't increase you will eventually decrease you. And this was written by General Colin Powell. Does anyone know who he is? None of the students know General Colin Powell? Okay. He's the first African American Secretary of State, and he's a retired general. Okay. Um, one more quote by Colin Powell. And I, I mentioned him to say that if someone at his level, I mean, he's literally at the top of his game. And if he says that the people around you can impact you negatively and that you need to be aware of this, then I think that's something that we should probably take heed to. And in this book is a lot of different quotes from a lot of different people from all walks of life. I have an exercise guru, Sean T, to Heidi Klum, a supermodel, to Aristotle, to Gandhi, different people from every walk of life from all years back in history, which means this is not a new concept. This has actually been around. So if, if it's people have been talking about this, from three, 400 years ago, then obviously there's some truth to it. And I'm sure I'm not the only adult that has stood up here and said you need to be cognizant of the people whom you hang around because I'm sure your parents have told you, teachers have told you their di direct reflection of who you are. Um, another qu quote he has is, a mirror reflects a man's face, but what he is really like is shown by the kind of friends he chooses. The simple but true fact of life is that you become like those with whom you closely associate for the good and for the bad. Anyone want to comment on his quote? Does anyone think it's true, false, makes no sense, illogical? Well, does anyone in here think that um, the people you hang around with have the potential to impact you, whether good or bad? Okay. Ah, uh, my friends are fun. They're good enough for me. They're good enough for you. But what type of friends? What type I'm of talking people? like you. That's how it comes out. Exactly. So, but what type of friends do you have? What do you mean they're fine? Fine for you? What are these friends doing? We go out on the weekends and just cruise. What is cruising? The mall. What's at the mall? Friends? What type of friends? Well, my friends. They're, they're the good friends. Okay, and what type of good friends are they? What Are these friends from school? Some. Some? And where are the others from? 
I don't know. Are they older than you? Are they younger? It's mostly older. Mostly older? And why do you choose to have these individuals as your friends? Because they're cool. What is your definition of cool? Come on, what's your definition of cool? Like you me. said they're cool. And they can drive. They can drive, that's the definition of cool. Now you also said you're cool. So explain to me what cool means to you. I don't hang out with the nerds. You sure? By whose definition? Mine. And what is your definition of a nerd? Come on, you said you don't hang out with the nerds. Who's your, what's your definition Anybody of a nerd? Thinks they're smart. Thinks they're smart? Do they think they're smart or you think they're smart and perhaps you're jealous because they're smart? Perhaps you're I not doing care. what you're- I hang out with the people I choose to hang out with. And who are the people you choose to hang out Are they smart? They're cool. What is cool? You mean they're not hot? What's cool? I'm out of steam. <laughs> <laughs> they're what? This is the stuff I put up with the theater group at Chapticon High School in St. Mary's College, uh, County. And you're the asking. same circular argument she has presented to me are the discussions I've tried to have. Mm -hmm. My point of view presenting to Dr. Banks was I don't have a definition of me. So I tried to tell her mm -hmm. this is the best I have with what I know so far. Again, I'm talking like you. Until you find out something better, you will remain where you are. Absolutely. Until you know better, you will not do better. Right now, it might not be all that important. Stand by for when you come out into the real world, and I'm the person who will be talking to you for an interview. Right. For potentially accepting you in school, higher education. For potentially thinking of you as a mate. Not happening much. Sorry. Came to play. Oh, I, lo to play. I loved it. <coughs> I'm sorry you gave out a steam. Because we, we can keep going. But that's what it takes. It takes that type of conversation so that I can try to get Ming to tell me what he's trying to say. He couldn't tell me what cool was. He couldn't tell me why is it bad to be smart. All he knows is those are his friends and those are the people that he, hang ar he hangs around. But why? I still need to know why. Let's have, is anyone else willing to have that same type of dialogue with me regarding their friends? One last thing. Okay. I'm sorry if I come across as picking on you as a peer of younger age. I'm two generations away from you. I am sorry if I come across as portraying your age group as airheads. The trouble is, until you determine for yourself your particular place and what you want to do, your goals, and all the other things that Dr. Banks wants to present, there you are and there you will remain. At $85 an hour as a face painter, I know where I am. And I'm really good at what I do. The money speaks for itself. Go. Say again. Who do you face for? I'm sorry. Who do you face paint for? Me. I am a face painter at carnivals, festivals, birthday parties. So you own your own face painting company? Yes. Oh. I work there. I'm face painting. <laughs> I'm in St. Mary's County, two hours away. But there are companies. I beg your pardon. Oh no, go ahead. Go ahead. There are companies in metropolitan areas for y'all. That would be Baltimore, Annapolis, and if you want to really stretch yourself, you go to D.C. Okay. There are companies in these cities who ask for face painters. You, I, you, I uh, interview with them. Show them how good you are at what you do. They will send you to the jobs. When they charge a customer 125 bucks an hour and you make 90, I do that with a DC group, by the way, for three hours running, three times a weekend, twice on Saturday and once on Sunday, do the math. <laughs> and those are basic jobs but you have to make the effort to know what you want to do by the way follow your bliss is an exceedingly important thing in careers 
But those are the things you evolve into a job. I evolved into face painting at the tender age of 35. I did it because of a life coach. Not Dr. Fanks, but that's what she does. I found my flow. I found my bliss. And since the age of 35, I have been doing this as a professional career on the side. Now that I'm retired from my regular career, I'm doing full-time face painting. Every weekend is booked between now and August of this year at 90 bucks an hour. Does it work? Does it come across as worthwhile? Is it something that, like that, you want to do? You don't have to be face papers. But Dr. Banks drives the message of being a life coach where we discover this is what works. This is what interests you. The basic rules of bliss. You forget what time it is, you forget to drink water, you forget to pee. <laughs> when you're into that particular groove, you're doing what's important to you. Now, Dr. Banks will show you how to make it a career or make it something that enhances your life rather than just something you wish you could do. So Ming, when you're out doing face painting, do you ever have the opportunity to connect with people? Have you gotten one job because of a, somebody that you met with? Have you, you know, done anything else in your career just because of people you met while face painting? As an electronics technician, mm -hmm. face painting two children who belonged to a family, they lived on a boat, they had trouble with their electronic navigation system. In my career, I have been an electronics technician for 48 years. When I told them, let me look at it, they said, of course. I went and did three hours of work on their boat, finding a simple bad connection buried at the base of the mast. That was a $400 job. Don't listen to me because I'm talking about money. Listen to me because I was doing exactly what Dr. Banks was describing, which was soft skills. In Yiddish, it's called schmooz. <laughs> Madam, I'm sorry. I have okay. stolen far too much of your time. No, th because that's more productive. I would rather have a discussion with you where they can learn. Maybe that's the better type of learning than just, and I said that when I got up here. I'm not here just for you to hear me talk or for me to make a speech. I'm here to help you. And if I only am able to help one person, then my work is done. If t Ming and I together can help someone take one step further to reach in their career goals or help better understand what this big picture life is about, then that's fine. You haven't stolen the show. I think we're working great together. We need to have a team and take this show on the road. But we need to make certain, but it needs to be with an audience that's willing to receive what we are trying to say. If you're not willing to receive what we're saying, then that's cool. Ming makes $90 an hour in one job doing one thing. I have two jobs where I already make well over six figures, past 100, passing 200. So as my husband would say, when I was working on my doctorate, I'll tell you this story. I'm sitting around crying because I'm upset because the dissertation process was arduous to say the least. So on weekends when he, we would go somewhere and my nephew was living with us, um, you know, I'm just sitting there, I just can't get it done because the dissertation was so hard. It was so much back and forth, back and forth. One day, my husband literally walked out of the door and he's like, fine, I got mine. That hurt me to the core. My husband has a bachelor's degree in chemistry, a master's in anal analytical chemistry, and he, his goal was to be a PhD chemist, and the school, the University of Pittsburgh, asked him to come to their dental school, so he also has a DMD. He's a general dentist, that's a doctor of dental medicine. So he got his, and I mean, as much as that hurt me and as blunt as he was, I got mine. So if you wanna get yours, I can tell you how to do it, I can give you some steps, Ming can give you some steps, we can give you steps together, but if you're not willing to listen and to receive, again, you don't have to take every word that I say and run with it. I would suggest that you take information from different groups of people, but make sure that all of those groups have your good in the forefront, not people that are going to tell you negative things, people that don't want to see you prosper and get ahead. Don't listen to 
that. You know who you are or you should know who you are. So that's the first step is becoming self-aware. I mentioned that this morning when we were talking. You have to have a strong sense of self-awareness. You need to know who you are first and foremost. You need to know what your talents are, what your strengths are. You need to identify those. Um, there's a study at the University of California, which you can get free online, which is actually referenced in this book, that will help you identify your strengths. For example, if Cassie and I were friends, and I'm always telling her, oh, well, you know, you're, you can't do this and you can't do that, she needs to know within herself, yes, I can. Why are you telling me I can't? But if I'm one of those overpowering people, she will just sit there and listen to what I say and not achieve her goals and not accomplish her goals. So she, Cassie needs to make certain that she has people in her group that are trying to help her stretch her vision and not choke her dreams. Any comments, any questions? Any, does anybody have any ideas on how you can build a good circle of influence? No comments. Does anybody want to even have a circle of influence? Does anybody have one? <laughs> you don't have, so you, are you saying you don't have friends when you say you don't have a circle of influence? But that's what a circle of influence is. Friends, it's your parents, it's your relatives, it's different people, your associates, your colleagues, if you have a part-time job. All those people are, can be in your circle of influence. Yes, ma'am, with the like well, you have friends, but doesn't mean you want to learn from them or and get your influences from them. Right? You're exactly right. And why exactly are you friends with them? Well, I'm not saying my friends are not. Not you necessarily. I'm just saying when you said we have friends, people have friends in their circle of influence. So why are those people in your circle if they're people that you don't necessarily want to learn from? What are you getting out of the relationship? Maybe if you're on a team, and you have to be there. You have to be with them every day. Okay. Okay. You don't want to learn from them, but you have to be around them, and they're going to not everyone's going to like you on a team. And absolutely. And the wise thing in what she just said is that you don't necessarily, go, you're not necessarily going to like each other. You have to be around each other because you're on a team. But she already knows who she should be listening to and who she shouldn't because otherwise she wouldn't have even made the statement that you don't necessarily want to learn from everybody you're with. So kudos to you. Anyone else have a circle of influence, want to comment? No comments? So does everyone in here think that their circle is a great circle and Young lady, what's your name? Maddie. Maddie, tell me a little bit about why you don't think your circle is great. Well, there's some people in my circle who are, you know, good influencers. They want to succeed like I do. They want to go somewhere, be somebody with themselves. Mm -hmm. And then there's some people in my circle who decide to come to high school and they just want to do what they want to do and they want to start everything and, you know, just not mind their own business and, you know, all this other stuff. That's not necessary. Okay. Because we're, you know, growing up. Right, and I don't want you to expose anyone, but why are those those people then still in your circle? Are those the same people you're talking about that's on a team and, or, so that's why they're still in your circle? Well, yeah, but like we also grew up together and I've tried to help this person throughout the year, you know, because they've been through a lot and I've tried to be there for them, but I don't think they see that. I get it, I get it. So how long are you going to continue to let them remain in your circle because um, there's a process that I also talk about checking the connection and I'll just give you a few questions when you go through the process of checking the connection you look at the people Maddie in your circle let's just say there's ten people it is suggested that you not have more than five people in your circle of influence and this is not just my suggestion these are theorists who have who have studied communication and relationships and connections and they say if you have more than five people in your ear that's too many people. So you need to limit your amount of connections. Um, I have a process where basically you put the person's name, and let's just say you and I, Maddie, at the end of the book, you, you ask yourself the question, um, does Lisa um, say that I'm amazing? Does she do things to encourage me? And the, the list right here said, do these people in my circle support my current journey? Do they have a desire to see me succeed? Do they meet my definition of successful? Because Maddie, at your age, of course, you have a different de definition of successful than I do. Um, do they define themselves as successful? Does their definition of success equate to my definition? Are they willing to mentor me to success? Do they dream big? Do they refuse to be defeated? Are they supporters of formal education and advanced degrees? Do they understand, appreciate, and support my vision? 
Do they believe that I can accomplish my goals? Now, I know those are some hard questions, some wordy questions, but these are the questions that we need to think about. And you don't have to say them aloud to people. If Maddie and I are in the same circle, and I began to ask these questions of Maddie, and I say, well, no, her dream, her idea of success is just working, and I'm not demeaning a fast food restaurant, because at your age, that's a great job. That's where you need to start. You're not going to be a senior executive in a private organization at 15, 16, and 17 years of age. But if your goal is not to go further than working at Burger King, and my goal is to go to a community college, and you're saying, Lisa, no, you don't need to go to college. You need to come here to Burger King. Maddie, I need to get you out of my circle because you are putting negative things in my head. You're not encouraging me to reach my dreams and to reach my goal. So basically, you are not, you're choking my dreams versus, versus stretching my vision. Vision, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. You're cutting someone out of your No, because the, the people that you're cutting out, if they are not people that are supportive and helpful to you, then why do you still want them in your circle? And when, you, when I say circle, again, using the definition of Maddie and I, we're friends in school, we always hang out. We can still go out to eat on weekends, we can do fun things together, but I need a group of people that are in my ear telling me, Lisa, you can make it. Lisa, you need to dream big. You need to do this. Even though Maddie's on the other side saying something else, at this point, I'm not paying attention to Maddie anymore. Yeah, we can go clothes shopping, we can eat, but you're not going to impact me because I know that Maddie is not you know, concerned about my success. She's not trying to help me get anywhere. She wants me to remain stagnant where she is. So no, you're not making more enemies, and you don't have to be mean or disrespectful to the person. Like I said, you know, everything is for a season. Perhaps this is not the season and the time for them to be in your inner circle. Not to say five years from now, that person could get back in your circle. But right now, if your goal, for example, is going to college, then you need people in your circle that's going to push you to get there. And another thing, if you're the smartest person in your circle, and what's your name? Eve, Eve, if you're the smartest person in your circle, then you need a new circle. Some people like being the smartest person because they have all the great things to say, but then who's feeding into you? Who's make, giving you infor information that's helpful? Instead, you are giving out all of the information, but there's no one to help you grow. So if you're the smartest person in your circle, I would recommend and suggest that you get someone else, some other people in your circle. More questions? Yes, ma'am. Like, some people, like, parents, they can want you to be successful, but sometimes, like, if a kid has, like, a dream to do something that's maybe not too reliable, mm -hmm. but a parent wants them to go to school, they need to be, like, a lawyer or a doctor or something, like, super reliable, right. mm -hmm. but that's just not what the kid, like, would ever want to do with their life, and they're just not going to be happy, like, what do you do about that? Well... To be, I, I get what you're saying. A lot of parents are like that when it comes to the arts, unfortunately, because they think you can't necessarily get a job in the arts. You need something more concrete. So I get it. But I would say if your parents are saying that they definitely want you to get a college degree, I would get that college degree and then minor in the arts, minor in something else that you want to do. Also, when you're in college, make friends and build relationships with individuals that can help you in that other area and do things. If, if, if it is arts, for an example, do those type of things now while you're in college rather or, or even now to help you to so that you can still fulfill your passion even though you're doing what your parents say do. Because in the long run, to be honest, and in this day and age, a college degree is very, very, very valuable. It's going to be very hard for you all to get a degree without, I'm sorry, to get a, a, a really good job or a job that satisfies your financial needs without a college degree. Um, now, there is, 
an initiative now. As a matter of fact, I was supposed to be driving to New York when I leave here, but, but because of the snow, I'm not going now. But there's an initiative to put career tech education back into the public school system. And that's the arts, that's cosmetology, that's wood shop. And I was talking to one of the other speakers earlier about, you know, those are some great jobs, some very high paying jobs. So I get it, I really get it. College is not for everyone. But um, of course, I'm not telling you to be disobedient for, to your parents. I would definitely recommend if somebody's going to pay for your college degree, get it because you can always use a college degree, even if it's not in your particular field. I actually studied law enforcement, and I'm not doing law enforcement. But that's because I didn't really. I wanted to get a job where I could. I wanted to get a degree where I could be qualified for a job immediately after two years because I'm a first generation college graduate. I had to pay my, my own money to go to college. My church actually lifted an offering so that I could go to college the first quarter. Exactly. So um, if you have somebody that wants to pay for a college degree, rest assured, I would get that college degree and use that to move on. So is this initiative which is like a bone tech school um, that does all of these different mm -hmm. things for cosmetology and woodwork and things like right. that. So is it going to be like a statewide thing? It, it, to be honest, it's nationwide. And actually, since it was President Obama, it's ending this year in September. But it's a federal grant, so I'm sure there will be other federal grants in the future. And um, this county did not apply for the grant. In Maryland, I know Prince George's County has the grant. I have New York, Buffalo, Toledo, and Boston, but it's across the entire United States. Um, now, I don't know with this administration if the focus is going to be on career tech education again. And when I say this administration, I mean the Trump administration versus the Obama administration versus the Bush administration, but that's a great question. More questions? Comments? Well, I think my time is up. In conclusion, make certain that you have people in your circle when you do a self-assessment and an awareness check of those individuals. Make certain that you have someone, at least one person, in your circle that's going to push you like Derek's father did and help you get to where you need to go so that you can cross the finish line. Thank you.